Okay, here we go. <sighs> so, this is Blades of Avernum, which is based on the original game, Blades of Exile, which is based on the original game, Exile 1. Uh, is there a way to turn down the volume? I guess you have to be in the game for that. Okay, but anyway. So, the boy eats your cherry pin and whatnot. Um, this is what's known as a infinite play RPG because people make custom levels and upload them, and then you can play their custom levels. Um, but yeah, it's your basic RPG, uh, and it's the uh, stock game, the one that you get just from the beginning, as well as all the other Exile slash Avernum games, always have an amazing amount of imaginative story to it. And um, all the Avernum, Gene Forge, and Exile games are published um, art artwork and... Uh, programming are all done by one person, a guy named Jeff Vogel uh, from Spiderweb Software. So it's one person that did all of this, which is kind of amazing. So let's start her out. Good God, that's loud. <laughs> Let me try and turn it down just a bit for me, at least. Uh, creating your party. Um, hmm. I do like doing sort of a... Um, Kind of a, not really a cheat, that's not the right way to put it. A, what's the best way to put it? A party design, which is kind of interesting. One of the differences I see is you can only have four characters in this game, whereas in the previous games, you could have six characters. Um, but I, I like having a character design that allows all of my guys to be warrior mages. Um, it makes it a lot harder to level up your characters, but when they are leveled up, oh, they're powerful. <laughs> so let's go through this. Um, I, I don't delete and then create new characters or whatnot. Um, actually, I don't know about the difficulty. What does that do? Hmm. But, um... And I also... Some I don't know. <laughs> I just have some weird names that I... Uh, let's leave it for there for now. Uh, character type? What's the different character types? Oh, custom. Yeah. Um, edit statistics. Okay. So, this is the basic, I think. Yeah, this is basic uh, stuff. Um, okay, yeah. Um, oh yeah, so this takes some practice, uh, or some planning. Okay, so one of the main things is your magical skills. If anyone that has uh, mage or priest spells up to level 3 automatically gets m most of the spells of that level. So it's important that you have all of your characters have 3 on mage spells and 3 on priest spells, even though that'll make it so you don't have m many stats for anything else. Um, and also very important, if you're going to put that much on spell power, is to put a lot on intelligence, because that's straight out damage. Okay, and every time you add points to it, everything gets a little bit more expensive. Um, preferably, you only pick one type of weapon skill, uh, which is either thrown, bows, pole, or melee. Uh, which, that's how you say it, melee. Um, and, um, so, and you try and pick the best one. There are some very powerful pole weapons, there are some very powerful bows, there are some very powerful thrown missiles, but none of them very well combine with spells like melee weapons. Um, bows and thrown missiles are really good for doing damage when you don't have, I mean, ranged damage when you don't have much m uh, magic ability. But since all four of my characters are going to have magic ability, I'm going to have plenty of ranged. Pole weapons, there are, oh, I think there are like three 
or four uh, unique pull weapons in the game, in the in the basic game. Uh, you can make all your own weapons, your own monsters, your own this, your own that, even with your own graphics, and phew, it's ridiculous how much you can make when you're making your own levels. Um, okay, there are like three or four unique pull weapons, and most of them are designed to kill one specific uh, species or one, like Dragon Slayer or Giant Slayer or something like that. So they're good, but they're kind of specific. And also, um, they don't allow you to do dual wielding or use a shield, depending on how you want to set up your characters. So you definitely can get a lot of benefit out of the pole, bows, and throne, but I perf personally prefer having melee on all of them. Okay, so I'm going to put two on melee. Um, now with lores and let's see first first aid. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, no. So well, maybe it's lore. Hmm. I think there's uh, certain skills that combine. Like this one should combine. Hmm. It doesn't really say that though. Uh, it used to be that, for example, oh, you know, must be the Arcane Lord. Come on. The more in your group, the better. You don't need to concentrate this skill all on one person. That, there's one. Okay, so there's uh, Arcane Lore. There should be Item Lore. Where's Item Lore? Oh, maybe I can scroll down? No. Nature Lore? Okay, that's stupid. <laughs> I, I don't mind getting in combat. Um, there are times, well, there are times when I don't want to get in combat, but, um, where, okay, so tool use, you need one person with a lot of that, if you're going to do that, although, once again, if you have good spellcasters, they can usually do that, same thing with first aid, if you've got spell, good spellcasters, you might not need very much first aid, um, Luck is really useful for critical hits, if I remember right, and I think one of the special things about luck is... What is it, that the skill points don't increase? Or, no, I guess it's the price doesn't increase. It's, like, really cheap. So, I think that's what it is. It's really inexpensive. Um, okay, so, wait, did I already... Oh, I should put two points in that, yeah. Okay. Uh, endurance, uh, health, and resistance to poison. Once again, poison's not that important, because you are going to uh, have lots of spell power to r remove poisons, although there's some po there's a lot of different status effects, and some of them are very painful. So, although it used to be willpower, but I guess they've made that endurance. <laughs> I have to kind of learn it, because I've never actually played this game. So I guess this will be a walk, I mean a let's play instead of a walkthrough, even though I've played Blades of Exile. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, one of the other things about endurance is, of course, it increases your uh, health pool, which doesn't really matter in small scale, but if you ever fight something that does a ridiculous amount of damage, um, you'll need the amount of health necessary to survive taking a blow, or two blows, or whatever. So that's why health is important. Uh, intelligence, the main thing is more effective and more spell points, so it for spellcasters, which most of my guys are going to be spellcasters, and they're going to use spell power to make it so that they're decent fighters, um, that's going to be very important. This is going to be basically the most, basically the most important one. Um, oh yeah, uh, dexterity is also very important um, be for even spellcasters because they um, might be able to cast two spells per round if they have enough dexterity, for example. Um, strength, how much you can carry, which is fairly important, um, and straight out how much damage you can do, which in long dungeon crawls, you're basically going to haste and bless most of your characters, and then it's going to be based off of your strength, so you'll be able to kill off a whole bunch of enemies faster with more strength, etc., like that. So, um, that's that. Hardiness, what is this? Oh, that's just a basic um, reduction of physical damage, I think. And defense? Um. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it does two things. It uh, reduces the chance of getting hit. Um, and also uh, makes it so that you are less encumbered, which encumbrance reduces your spell ability. 
And finally, we've got well, potion making. Yeah, I only need one person to know that. Um, nature lore. I wish it would tell me if you need that one. Well, only one character needs to get that one. Okay, and then <coughs> finally assassination, which does uh, about up to, I think, like 60% of the time you can do like not only your normal hit, but like 150% more damage than your normal hit after your normal hit, 60% of the time, so it's pretty close to just straight out doubling your damage if you get that close to maxed. Um, so it, it's basically a whole other hit. Um, when you use... This is actually, I think, a little bit better if you do use a two-handed weapon like a polearm or something large, um, because if you use two weapons it does an assassination with your first weapon, but not your second weapon. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it's, regardless, it's good for either one. So, that is quite a bit of time <laughs> that I spent on that. Um, but, let's see, what else should I get? Um, I'm probably going to get one of each of these. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I could get one more yet again, or I could get more intelligence, or I could get more... I'm thinking of going intelligence and melee. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, so is arcane lore for items as well? Decode magical inscriptions and spells. Yes, I think so. Okay, so I think arcane lore is basically what item lore and uh, arcane lore was in the past. So it's used for identifying items without actually having to cast identify, and it's which is very useful actually. Um, and it's also uh, used for um, being able to read uh, magic tomes that might be beyond your means normally. Um, and you probably max out at about 30 across the group. So um, we're going to have eight to begin with, which isn't that great. Okay, so that's that. Um, now, I do like reducing the amount of experience I get, because you can just keep playing and playing and playing, and I like to have the same characters go through the process of playing and playing and playing. Um, so, if it takes a long time to level up, it's not really a big deal. It just makes things a little bit more difficult, or I might have to rerun um, a camp, a scenario is what they're called. Um, to get more powerful to be able to handle what I'm getting up to, so that's just how I work on that. Um, let's check out what these are, because I don't know specifically, they change them with each game. Um, summon one beast to your aid, that sounds stupid! A certain foes will attempt to clever magic. Mm, unfortunately, this will you much more like... Okay, that's, that's somewhat useful. Um, that basically means that you can't get dumbfounded, which is well, basically, or dumbfounded in a few other things. Uh, well, no, it looks like it's just dumbfounded. Um, let's see, what does it do? Oh, it doesn't actually say in the protection. Okay, whatever. But it just makes it less likely that you'll get dumbfounded. And dumbfounded is... Oh, or feared. It looks like feared, too. Fear, you're pretty well immune to that with enough intelligence anyway. Uh, but the uh, dumbfoundedness makes it so that you can cast, m like, if you have level, normally level up to level 7 or 6 spells, if you get dumbfounded, depending on the level of the dumbfounded, you could go down to, like, 3 or 2 level, uh, rank spells. And um, you might actually even get so low that you can't cast uh, removal of or restore mind, which gets rid of dumbfoundedness. And so you're, you, that guy's kind of worthless after being dumbfounded, so <laughs> if you can resist being dumbfounded, that's very useful. But still, it's not quite useful enough, necessarily. Um, 